Today we're going to discuss the Coyote camshaft phasers, how they work in the system, why it's critical you have to have uh, good oil control, good oil pressure, good oil volume. Here are the Coyote phasers. So here's a Gen 2 uh, intake and over here we have an exhaust. This is the solenoid. This bolts in the front cover and the electrical piece is what you see coming out of the valve cover. These work essentially on oil pressure and camshaft springs. So the valve springs push the cams around and the oil pressure in the solenoid or in the uh, phaser holds the camshaft in a, the desired position. The ECU monitors that desired position with the sensor on the back of the head that monitors the camshaft and it adjusts based on the programmed versus actual. It will adjust the uh, duty cycle of the solenoid here. So this is spring loaded and you wanna make sure that this is free whenever you're doing cams and not stuck. Okay, this here is the oil pressure bleed. This solenoid has a little pin right there. Pin comes out, that's 100% duty cycle. Pin goes in, zero, right? Okay, and in the tune, you can adjust this duty cycle. So it has a base duty cycle that gets you close to the desired position. And then there's a PID loop, that's proportional integral and derivative. And it will adjust and learn because different oil pressures, different oil volumes, different oil viscosities will change things. There are no seals. Uh, well, there are some plastic seals in here. So as these wear, it could bleed off more uh, than ideal. There's no seal between the backing plates and the plates here. So you could bleed off more or less than ideal and the ECU will compensate and adjust. Same thing as valve springs wear. Uh, they'll lose tension and you know you might not need as much duty cycle to get the desired uh, position or you might need more depending on advanced versus retard. In here <clears throat> we have the backing plate with a uh, hole here and right here is a pin. There's a spring normally in here. The spring's not in there. Don't know where it went. But uh, this pin is spring-loaded, and normally it sits up, okay? And it actually fits right into this receiver groove. So when this is bolted together, like so, uh, that pin is spring-loaded, and if there's no oil pressure from this port right here, then the spring is uh, engaged, and the pin is engaged, and the camshaft is physically locked. This is a lock. So when they say that your Gen 2s are a mid-lock phaser, what it means is that when the camshaft is locked, when it's physically locked, that pin is in the receiver groove here, the phaser is midway between full advance and full retard. Gen 1s, it will lock you know, full advance on the uh, exhaust and full retard on the intake, okay? So if you have no oil pressure, the engine is off, the pin is locked into the case. It will not move. If you lose good oil control at RPM, a good, uh, sorry, good camshaft control, the ECU detects that, ah, we're losing camshaft control. It will bleed off all the pressure in the phaser through the front solenoid, through the front pin and the, and the solenoid there. And you'll lose oil pressure here. It will instantly pop that out and lock the camshaft in place, then throw a code. <clears throat> These here are the little sealing pieces, okay? These seal against the wall. There's a uh, spot here for them and a spot here. So they block off a chamber. So, and they're spring loaded with these little metal bendy tabs here, okay? So, and they will wear a little bit over time. If you have dirty oil that gets in there. That's why this is, uh, there's, a, there's a filter in the front of your camshaft. It's for these. So the oil comes in from the front of the camshaft. It goes through the, uh, into the head. We went over the oiling system on a previous video. So it goes up into the uh, chambers for the uh, lash adjust, or not the lash adjusters, but the, uh, the tensioners. 
and in the front oiling port of the camshaft, it will move through the camshaft and then out the front of the camshaft through a filter right here into the phaser. So dirty oil will wear these quicker um, and you can lose control. Uh, but essentially here's, here's the chamber. So if the chamber is full of oil and, and nice oil pressure, right? Uh, not low oil pressure, then it's full, it's full lock, right? Or it's full, fully advanced, fully retarded, depending on your intake versus exhaust. So this would be exhaust fully retarded. And then the ECU will bleed off pressure to move the camshaft to the desired position right there. So it bleeds it off from this chamber and boom, that's how it works. You have another chamber here, same thing. So it's, it's on both sides of it. It can move it either way as necessary. The valve springs push it around. Valve springs push on the lash adjusters and um, the rocker followers and the rocker followers with good oil pressure, the lash adjusters are fully pumped up. Rocker followers push on the lobes of the camshaft. They have ball bearings and a roller on them. So they will move that camshaft around. And this is just how we control it. So good oil viscosity is critical. Uh, lower viscosity will leak more through this, through these in the chambers and around here. This is not, there's no sealing surface here. It's just machined. Okay. So it will leak here um, and in the front as well. Uh, the higher viscosity you run, the less leakage you'll have. So I do know racers that'll run like a 1540 Dello and, and heavier weight oils. Uh, we run a 550 because we have really good oil control and we have good oil pressures. So if you have loose bearing clearances on your mains for high horsepower, uh, you're probably gonna need higher viscosity to minimize the, uh, the bleed off, try to keep as much pressure in these as possible if you wanna keep control. Of course, volume is critical as well. Um, low volume will cause problems and poor oil control will cause problems. So if you have, uh, a standard eight quart pan and you're at 8,000 plus RPM, nothing in there to no, no crank scraper, just a factory window train there. You're going to pump all of the oil to the top of the engine. Now this is where it is, right? Except the problem is it's, it's not draining from the head. It's all been used. It's all come out of all the systems and it's just sitting in the top of the head. It's not actually in here. And then in the oil pan, you have a bunch of air and oil foam mix. So the pump starts pumping that oil air foam through the engine. You can have bearing issues, of course, uh, and then you get air in this chamber. And as we all know, with air in your brake system, that hydraulic system now gets spongy and you start losing oil control. If you watch the camshafts on the duty or uh, in the uh, data log, you'll, you'll see these moving around a bit. OK, and you get to a certain point and the ECU is going to say, oh, I'm out and it will bleed off all pressure and lock, physically lock the phaser and the camshaft. So uh, then throw a code. We see this if you run low on oil, one or two quarts of oil low on a Gen 1, Gen 2 with eight quart pan, it's pretty detrimental. Uh, I've heard others recommend running a quart high on oil just for VCT control. And that can work, but the proper solution is a crank scraper and a windage tray. You, you really need to control the oil, get it out of the head, specifically the passenger head, get the oil drained properly under the, pan, under the uh, windage tray and back into the pan and give it time to, to dissipate all of the air out of the oil before it's picked up by the pump. Now, another thing you can do is run the GT500 oil pump. That's a high volume pump. Just keep in mind, the higher the volume, the quicker you're gonna pump everything to the top of the engine. So yeah, you're gonna pump it all through here, right? Um, and higher volume is great if you have loose bearing clearances. Uh, you can get more oil in there, right? And then everything up to the top. Um, and pressure can be higher as well. Your, each pump has a, has a pressure bleed and then the Gen 3s have an electronic bleed as well. Uh, pressure's necessary. The higher the pressure you have here, the more this is gonna be locked, okay? So the more valve spring it's gonna be able to handle. Stiff valve springs, Low pressure, uh, that's no good. You're gonna lose control. Stiff valve springs, high pressure, yeah, you got a good good control and then you can run a higher viscosity to minimize the bleed between these pieces in here. But um, if you pump it all to the top of the engine and, and then the oil pump's just picking up oil and air foam, it doesn't matter what oil you run and it doesn't matter what pressure or, or anything because you're just gonna pump oil, or air full of, uh, oil full of air through the engine and this won't work like it's supposed to. So, Viscosity is important. 
uh, pressure is important. And of course, uh, volume, like anything, is important. Um, volume is critical, really, when you have looser clearances. Uh, but control is necessary. These, we generally, it's, it's about the open pressure on the valve springs as to how much these can control and the viscosity and the pressure, right? So the higher the viscosity of the oil, the more valve spring it can handle. The higher the pressure, the more valve spring it can handle. The looser the bearing clearance is, the less it can handle because you'll have less pressure up here. Uh, but <clears throat> in general, like a stock car, you, uh, stock system, right? Stock clearances can handle 250 pounds open pressure. No problem on the spring to uh, control and still have control at RPM. Um, 270 is probably a bit too much. And then if you have looser clearances, you may not be able to even handle 250. And generally, it's all about the spring rate. Generally, we say most of the springs that are available for the Coyotes uh, is about 105 pounds seat pressure is the max spring you can use and control, have still full camshaft control through the VCT system. Uh, I don't even run springs that stiff. Uh, Gen 2 springs are amazing. Even on a turbo system at 25 pounds on an efficient system, they're great. Uh, we don't have valve float. Um, and those are what, like 76 pounds seat? So you can have a nominal increase of 85 or 95 if you're running higher boost. Still have full VCT, assuming you have good oil control, uh, viscosity, and volume in the system. But in general, this is how the system works. And uh, this is why it's critical, once again, on the Coyotes, oil, oil control is more critical than on older engines.